Ghost with praise right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Does anybody feel the ground beneath you moving? That happens when levees begin to break. Hello? Hallelujah! Something's fixing to break in your house, in your prayer life, in your worship, in this church. Hallelujah! I feel to do something right now. If you need a touch in your body, I want to ask that you would come down front, and we're going to pray for you right now. And we're going to speak to that sickness. Amen. Sometimes we need to pray about things, and sometimes we need to speak to it. I want you to come down if I'm okay here. Come down. Hallelujah. We're going to pray the prayer of faith right now that God is going to touch you. Anybody believe that God's going to touch you? I want you to come down here like the little lady that laid her dead son on the bed and spoke to her husband. It is well. Hallelujah. Come on. We're going to work this praise team. I feel at home. I interrupt my praise team all the time. God's going to touch. You know what I want to do? I'm listening to the Holy Ghost right now. We're not going to lay hands on you. You know, there are certain types of procedures for certain things. There could be surgery to remove a cancer. There could be chemo. There could be radiation. Radiation is something that just goes all over your body. Maybe the doctor doesn't know where the cancer went, so he can't chase it down. But they put radiation all over your body. I feel like that's going to happen in this body tonight. That God's virtue is just going to come through here like radiation. And it's going to touch the finger of this body, the hand of this body, the foot of this body, the back of this body, the skin of this body. It's just going to come down right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's believe it right now. Just as easy as you feel the Holy Ghost, you're feeling that virtue that is falling and flowing on you right now. Something's got to happen when we say the name of Jesus. God be God right now. God be God right now.
Go ahead and put your praise out there. Let your praise wait on the performance of God. book of James says about the sick but I want you to know there's there's a bigger hand than mine in this room right now don't you worry about my hand touching you there's a greater hand that's coming down right now and he's healing you and he's touching you He's making the crooked places straight again. say the name of Jesus, angels reach for their swords and they say, where do we attack? In the name of Jesus, I curse the sickness that's in this building, that's upon the houses, in the name of Jesus. And we praise you right now. Hallelujah, 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 for you that are here tonight and your spouse, your child, your parents couldn't make it. Someone in your house couldn't make it tonight because they're sick. I want you to say, speak the word, Lord. Just speak the word. And my house will be touched. As you're in God's house, God's going to go to your house. And touch. Right now, as we're praising Him, as we're worshiping Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You be looking for a text message from somebody in your house saying, I feel good right now. Something just came in this house right now. My fever's broke. The nauseous is gone. Somebody better look for it. You better look, you better be expecting a text, a call from somebody. Because when we pray and we worship, something happens.
feel God in this house. Hallelujah. And I don't know what this church is going to think about what I'm fixing to say, and Sister Linville is always right, and I'm always wrong if we're different. But there's a real thing, in my opinion, called mental illness. We've always had it. In the 80s, we called it a nervous breakdown. But it's real. It's a real thing. And these kinds of services treat mental illness. To steal it away with the presence of God. Huh? God can do more in five seconds than we can do in five years. Why I'm not rushing tonight. Because the presence of God can fall on you. And understanding can come. And once you understand something, life is a little bit easier. You can walk, you can limp in the doctor's office, and he'll tell you what's going on, and you'll feel better and still have the same symptoms but now you know and you can walk out of there and say well Lord I got cancer all right now I can figure it out right here oh my 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 faith is a decision that you decide I'm going to believe beyond the facts I'm going to believe beyond what I'm seeing. Oh, hallelujah. And tonight, God is taking us by the hand and say, I want to touch you. I want you to understand I've got you. And if you can leave here tonight with the understanding God has me. And several years ago, I was in the living room, and my and Daisha was about three or so, and she was making some struggling noise in her bedroom. She just kept on struggling noises, sounds. So I walked in there, and she was trying to make up her bed. She's a three-year-old making up the bed. And uh, I, I just went in, and I just took over. I said, just sit down. Get out of the way, Desha. Sit down, Desha. I'll, I'll, I'll do this. So I started straightening up her bed, and then I grabbed a few things that was on the floor, and I started, then her dresser was out of whack, and I, and 10 minutes later, I'd cleaned the room. And Desha was sitting there on her little Barbie chair, just watching. I walked out, and I went in the living room, sat down, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And said, if you could make sounds that could get me into your room, I would fix what you're struggling with. And I would fix other things that you ain't even struggling with yet. If you could just get me in the room. There is a sound 
The walls come down. There's a sound. There's a praise that God's people can, can say. That God just steps in the room and he just takes over. You don't have to tell him what to do. He knows what to do. He knows how to be God. He ain't running against another God. He's God. He, he's going to win the election. He's God. And if you can get him in your house, if you can get him in your heart, if you can get him in your head, that's all you got to do. And he'll take over. If you'll let him, you got to sit down somewhere. I believe it was Isaiah said, if I can get out of the way, if I can just get out of the way. It's hard, it's hard. It's hard to do that. That's God. You don't know what he's doing. But we got to know, don't we? Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Did anybody get touched tonight? And if you get a text, you interrupt me. Did somebody get touched? You get a text, you interrupt me. Sister Linville, what do you want me to do? Can I go 10 more minutes? Okay. Okay. You may have your seats. Here's the beautiful thing. I came up here today and I prayed and I studied and I have nothing. I have no message tonight. I have a lot of things to say. But I have no structured message. So I went back to the house, which is a wonderful place. I, I, I want to say the accommodations here is wonderful. And uh, the presence of God is so rich. I, I'm sorry, I just don't have time to do all the political stuff. But Sister Linville is a legend in our ranks, and we are so thankful that this church shares her with the country and the world. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. The accommodations are so wonderful, Sister Johnson. She is picking out everything in the house. I want this, I want that, and I want this. And I'm like, it'd be cheaper for me to buy the house than to buy all this stuff, you know. Um, I have no message tonight. I have a lot of things to say. And God, God wanted it that way because He loves you so much. He wants you to have every, every person in here, He wants a fragment to go to your lap. I've got thousands of messages in my repertoire. I've been preaching for a, a week or two. 35 years. So I can just drop any message in the world. Who wants that? We don't have time for that. We need a word from God. So I don't have a pretty message tonight. I don't have a message at all, but I have a thought. I have a thought. And it goes perfect with this. If you'll give me, I'm going to say 10 minutes, but you know I'm lying. I'm sorry. I drove two days to get here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In 1 Kings, you don't have to stand tonight because I'm going to do some lengthy reading. 1 Kings chapter 17. God gave this to me today, and I thought, Lord, what do I do with this? And, and I said, it doesn't really fit, but now I know God actually knows what he's doing. Wow. God knows what he's doing. 1 Kings chapter 17, starting at verse 8. I'm going to go ahead and read from my Bible. I was hurting the, the multimedia people. I love multimedia people. This is such a tool. This is so, I, I, I get law. I don't know how we did it before. But this is such a tool. Thank the Lord for the sound and the, everything that you people are. What a beautiful church. Wonderful. I will be more political tomorrow but I just got some business to take care of. 1 Kings 17, verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, him is Elijah, Elijah, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to 
Zidon and dwell there. Behold, I want you to see this word. I want you to follow me here. This is God talking to him. He says, Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. But I want to give you a secret. The widow woman knows nothing about it. Has God ever kept details away from you? God told Elijah, I have a widow woman there. I have commanded her to take care of you. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, fetch me. She was gathering sticks for her. Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And she was going to fetch it, and he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And this is what she, that, that, that got to her. And so she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. Now, when you can tell someone exactly what you have, you're broke. I've got a little bit of, I've got two sticks. I've got a little bit of this and I've got that. If you can name what you got, you're done. Huh? You're, you're broke. You're physically, financially, spiritually, you're, you're, you're broke. And Elijah said unto her, here's where the Holy Ghost starts meeting. Oh, this is a beautiful story. Beautiful story here. I didn't read this, but Elijah was in a brook that had dried up. A raven was feeding him. Okay, and the brook dried up, so he's in a famine, and God tells him that there's a woman in another land, in another little passage here, that can take care of him. So Elijah leaves a problem to go to a promise, and when he gets there, the promise is uglier than his problem. We got two crises here. We have two crises. We have we have a hungry man, a hungry prophet that wants to backslide. He wants to backslide, but God stops him and says, "You're going to go there, and she's going to feed you." She don't know it yet, so she's getting food to die. So she postpones her funeral. To treat this man of God. And then the Holy Ghost, I'm going to call it the Holy Ghost. I know it's Old Testament. Moves upon Elijah in verse 14. An understanding of the situation pops in his head. He realizes, I'm about to be a part of your life. And you're about to be a part of my life. We're two lost ships. God has orchestrated together. For thus saith the Lord, the man of God said, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did me eat many days. Many days means one year. And he'll take care of you today. And he'll go forward and take care of us. They had food for a whole year. Aren't you glad God interrupted? Aren't you glad God sent a woman of God in your life to interrupt your funeral? privilege of meeting Brother Linville. 
But aren't you thankful that a pastor came? Right when you was about to die. If I was going to title this thought, I sent it to the people. My wife did. Ugly is fixing to look pretty. Huh? Ugly is fixing to look pretty. Hmm. 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 God kept the details away from both of these people that were in an ugly season in their life. Because if we would have got the details, the details would have messed up the faith. And it would have messed up the doubt. So God is, is great at being God. And he withholds the details because if you knew everything that was about to happen. Hallelujah. The best way to fix your ugly is to help somebody with theirs. Hallelujah. And God moved upon Elijah and said, you're going to go over here and you're going to touch it and you're going to go down there and you're going to want some food and get some food. And this lady thinks she's going to die. But I'm bringing you into her life. Oh, hallelujah. Just like God is doing some things tonight. As I said, if you can tell people you're down to two sticks, and you're fixing to bake a cake, and you and your son's going to eat that cake and die. I don't understand that. You talk about mental illness. I don't know if they were planning on something after that eating that cake, or what, or how they were going to die after. I don't know, but that was the plan to eat the cake. And get out of here. Because I've had enough. No, nobody here knows what I'm talking about. I've had enough. I'm done. How many has been saved by, the, by services like this right here? Thank God we have revival. That you can come to the house of God. Hallelujah. I don't know what I was going to come out of this. But maybe somebody was just about to say, that's it. Came to the house of God and God swooped down and touched you. And you're ugly. Fix it to get pretty. See what I'm talking about today. If we'll just keep going, I've got a few minutes here. If we could just keep moving. If we could stay faithful by, by, by the actions of this worship service, somebody built an altar today. Somebody pray today, and God came down, and God touched you, and this preacher's just telling you right now that the ugly that's in your world is fixing to be pretty. God is fixing to turn it around. Hallelujah. Oh, I wish Joseph was here. He'd tell us. You can have my coat, but you're not getting my character. What a woman this is. I hope to tell you, if I was about on the verge of dying and some preacher came to me and said, fetch me some water. What a hope. I'm, I'm clocking out. What a woman. What a spirit. New heart, right spirit. You got to have them both. Huh? Give me a new heart. Give me a right spirit. She's fixing to die. And she stops to take care of this preacher. hope 
the day before I die, my character is intact. And my spirit is still alive. I'm still looking to touch somebody. I'm still looking to. Um, she wanted to make his ugly pretty. And she was in ugly too. Oh, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Joseph said, not in spite of you, brothers, but because of you, brothers, I've here. You meant it for evil. But I held on to my character, and I held on to the revival service. I held on to that dream that God gave me. Hallelujah. And I had to go through a pit. I had to go through a prison. I had to go through some lies. But no matter what I went through, Joseph said, it didn't supersede the dream that God gave me. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Ugly. Fix and get pretty. I don't know anybody in here. I don't know any of your names except a couple of them. I don't know any of your stories. Your pastor is not one of those that kisses and tells. Matter of fact, she ain't kissed yet. So I don't know anything that's going on. But I want to tell you, your people, you got problems. And your back hurts sometimes. <laughs> Come on. Hello? I drive too long, my leg goes numb. Come on, we're people. Uh, there's no, there's no prophet, there's no spirit moving on me right now. I'm not prophesying if I say there's someone here who got a backache. Well, who don't have a backache? Huh? Well, here's the head is hurting. Well, who in God's world's hurting? <laughs> For real. But I want to tell you that there's some ugly. Not physical, but there's some ugly in your world. Whether it's a house and a job, marriage, children, there's ugly. And, and, and what, what touches ugly is faithfulness. I'm talking in the spirit. What touches ugliness is being faithful. As Elijah said, go fetch me some water and fetch me a cake, the Bible said that she went and did it. Being faithful. Being faithful. Being faithful. I was in this room earlier today praying, and God showed me something. Jacob and Leah. You know who they are? They had a daughter. The Bible's the Bible hints to us that Leah was ugly. I'm not shaming Leah. Leah was ugly. They had a daughter named Dinah. It's in the latter part of Genesis, in the 30s and maybe late 30, 40s of Genesis, that Dinah is raped. Her brothers go eventually and kill the people that raped her. This is where God speaks to Jacob and he says, we got to go back to Bethel. But then he changed it to El Bethel. He said, we got to go back to Bethel. There's another whole message there. You don't have time for that. But anytime there's trouble, you better find you a church, house of God. So he, he packed up and they went back to Bethel. Leah's ugly. Woman being raped is the ugliest thing in the world. Job 42. The Bible says that Job and his wife had three daughters. And they was the fairest of the land. There were none other women prettier. Than Job's girls. Job had an ugly life too. Leah was ugly. 
their daughter, Dinah, is in an ugly scene being raped. Job is in the ugliest scene that a man could be in. Do you know who Job's wife is in Job 42? It's Dinah. It's Dinah. The one that said, curse God and die, she's gone. But it's Dinah. Huh? Yeah, Google me. Y'all looking at me like a cow looking at a new gate. Ugly, 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 the prettiest of all the land. Ugly produces pretty. But you got to stay faithful. And you got to keep going. Does anybody here got the, got the grit to say, I'm going to keep going till the grace of God meets me. I'm going to keep on fighting. For this, I'm going to keep on pushing through this. It ain't always going to be like this. I said, it ain't always going to be like this. Hallelujah. The, the levees are breaking. There's new people coming to this place. Somebody needs to help me right here. Hallelujah. Ugly is turning the corner. And in the spirit, the ugly of the spirit, it's turning the corner. Hallelujah. 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 Not just for this church, but for the body of Christ. Ugly for those that just endure to the end. For those that just keep on. Last year, nine people in my church died of COVID. Nine. And just about all nine of them were our strong members. Huh? Just last year. There was a couple that died in the first year. I've got enough funerals. Nine. Just last year died. When that happens, you kind of get alone. And you're like, uh, hello? Hello? You see what's happening here? Hey! Hmm. But God says, just keep on going. Just be faithful. Just keep going. Just keep trusting me. Just keep moving. I think, I, think, I think the last two months, there's been like four families come to our church and, and just sell out and give their lives to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our, our service used to be uh, just, uh, uh, just, let's get through it. But now we're looking forward to our services. Huh? Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you don't know what I'm talking about. But, but I know what I'm talking about. Getting in the pulpit and kind of dreading going to church. Oh, what kind of news are we going to have tonight? But that ugly, and that's, we're always going to have a little bit of ugly. But that, that, but that ugly is gone. Huh? And the presence of God is here. And, and, and new people are coming. And things are happening. Hallelujah. And people are excited about church again. Amen. And I see that's what's going to happen to this place. Hallelujah. I'm not saying you're dead. I'm not saying you're ugly. I'm just saying, I know churches. And God's going to turn some things around. I believe that. I'm going to tell you right now. You know why, you know why I took the few minutes here? 
because about three weeks ago, I stood in my pulpit on a Sunday morning, and I felt the Holy Ghost. And I said, let's pray for the West Coast churches right now because they was a two hours behind us. They're not getting up. Let's pray for them that God will fill their churches. And I said, let's, we're going to pray for the East Coast right now, and we're going to pray that God would touch. They're an hour ahead of us, and, and, and they're getting the altar calls right now. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, bless the East Coast. Hey! And then your pastor gets with us and says, come on, let's have revival. I'll take a few minutes. I'm sorry about the school right now, but we're going to have church. And we're going to push through the sickness. Because ugly is going to get pretty. I wonder if you could stand to your feet right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want you to sing that hold on song. Hold on. I want you to sing hold on. Amen. My wife's going to sing a song, and it's not one of those fifth gear songs. But after she sings it, we'll go in fifth gear. But you need to hear this song. It's a song you all know. You've heard it. But it goes with this message. God's fixing them to do some things. Put your praise out there. Let your praise be waiting on God. We got any Joshua's around here that can shout while the walls are standing? Can, can we shout while the walls are still standing? Hallelujah! The wall's still there. I said the wall's still there, but we're going to shout. We'll preach about Miriam another day. I see a couple tambourines around here. We'll preach about Miriam another day. Moses' sister getting on the other side of the Red Sea and shouting. That's cool. Joshua said, we're going to shout on this side of ugly. The walls are still standing, and you're going to shout. Sickness is still in the house, we're going to shout. The job is still up in the air, we're going to shout. We're going to praise God. The altars are built. We got the walk with God. There needs to be a moment of celebration. Can somebody hold on just a little bit longer? Can you hold on for one more service? Can you let God be God one more time? Hey Amen. Let's worship Him right quick. you worship the Lord right now. And I held on until the storm was over. Oh, I don't claim to be a hero. I don't have
can tell that things there finally happened and I've got some blessings that I now call my own oh but there were times I did not their pew and walk down to the front I tonight. To I wonder how many can come down to the front and listen as a, as a body worship God together. I held on Hallelujah. Come on. The storm was over. All over the house. You may I not be in an ugly moment, but you just keep on living for God. Why don't you pray for somebody and say, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. We're going to get through this. Thank you.